Hello again, I am Blunty, and a couple of days ago I popped along to a meeting with the NVIDIA folk to chat about a few things. First of which is a new video card they've officially unveiled today. Announced today, released today. You can go get one of these right now if you want one apparently. They were even kind enough to thrust one of them into my hands so I can actually play with it and see for myself if it's any good. So, this is the GTX 950, and while it's the newest card, and probably the last card churning along with Nvidia's Maxwell GPU architecture, it's certainly not the most powerful of the bunch. The GTX 950 is the budget-friendly little brother of the GTX 900 clan. It's made for gamers moving up from integrated graphics and older cards, or simply those of you who don't want or need the larger, pricier monster cards out there. It's for gamers who aren't concerned terribly much about 4K gaming. It's for people who are happy at 1080p and want snappy, responsive gameplay that also lets them turn up some of the prettier graphics options and still run at 60fps or above. That's what Nvidia pitched anyway. They were also quite keen on driving home the significant improvements in latency that they have made with this card. The response between a mouse click and an action being displayed has been significantly shortened. One of the most vital things for fast twitch highly competitive games like the MOBAs that have surged in popularity over the last couple of years. And for those MOBA gamers, Nvidia are promising a highly responsive experience at or above 100 frames per second consistently. Personally, I don't play MOBAs, but I did install Dota 2 just to see what it was all about, and surely enough, it ran like butter. Now, I'm not going to run down the list of dry specs and back-of-the-box numbers like CUDA cores and texture units and all that kind of stuff. Those of you who watch me on a regular basis know I like to do things a bit more practically, a real-world use case. So I yoinked out the GTX 970 from my still freshly built brand new gaming PC and swapped in the Gigabyte Windforce OC Edition card that Nvidia had thrust into my hands to check out. OC Edition, of course, standing for Overclocked Edition. It has a slight 100 MHz or so overclock out of the box over the reference design. I'll have other videos about the specific card, its noise and heat levels, for example, and how well it overclocks further, of course. So if you haven't already, subscribe to make sure you catch that when it comes out. But for now, I left it at factory defaults and simply played a bunch of games. But just on the note of overclocking, I am expecting good things from it, based on my experience with just how well my own Gigabyte GTX 970 overclocked. Mm. The GTX 950, of course, has all of the nifty new DX12 support you're going to be wanting and in fact offers better DX12 support than the Radeon 370, its nearest direct competitor from the other guys, because the 950 supports DX12 feature level 12.1 and HDMI 2.0, both of which are bullet points the Radeon can't quite match, I'm afraid. And like the big brothers in the GTX 900 family, it of course has the other Maxwell tricks like MFAA, G-Sync and Dynamic Super Resolution. And while you won't want to be gaming at 4K on this budget-friendly card, it will happily drive displays up to 5K and playback 4K Ultra HD media, of course, with native H.265 encode and decode, which also makes it an attractive option for a TV-connected HD PC. Now, as you've been seeing for yourself, although being a budget-level card, it is by no means a slouch when it comes to pushing around those pixels. Of course, it had no problems with the likes of Dota and Counter-Strike and Serious Sam 3. None of those games really present much of an issue for modern graphics cards, but moving on to more demanding games like Hitman Absolution and Tomb Raider revealed a performance above what I'd actually expected. In most cases, I was using the GeForce Experience recommended settings for these games, applied automatically through the software. One of the reasons I like NVIDIA cards so much, they make it really easy to optimize your games. Anyway, I found in most cases it was happy to leave things at high and ultra settings. And even for a few games, it kicked in NVIDIA's dynamic super resolution trickery, which renders the game at above 1080p, then scales it back down again to offer up extra clarity and smoothness. And it worked really well. Now, Minecraft is one of the most common games I see people asking about whenever a new graphics card comes out at any price level, really. And duh, it has zero issues here. It ran really nicely. I even kicked in a few fancy shaders just to see if I could find the breaking point. I may even do a full separate video on the several different shaders I tried when I was experimenting around, if you like. 
But for now, the GTX 950 can certainly run with shader mods, absolutely, if you avoid the most demanding ones and don't mind frame rates that fluctuate between sort of 30 and 70 FPS on average. Occasionally they do dip down into the teens depending on the situation. Uh, so it's not great for PvP, but who plays PvP with shaders on anyway? But for gentler gameplay, you may very well be quite happy with it. Certainly looks cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Ark Survival Evolved, a survival game that's kind of blowing up right now on Steam Early Access. It is Early Access, which means it's not super well optimized right now, and even on mid-range GPUs it can have issues. But even without spending any time at all playing with turning settings down and leaving things set mostly on high, the GTX 950 swam through it fairly comfortably. I did hit some pretty severe frame drops in the heat of an ill-conceived dinosaur battle, but like I said, with most settings just left on high where I had them, there's plenty of wiggle room to turn a few things down a bit to find a spot where the game stays nice and smooth. So there you go, that was a nice variety of games I showed you there, away from the practical stuff and back into Benchmark Town, because we all love benchmarks, don't we? 3D Mark's Skydiver benchmarks were the sweet spot I found, delivering a score of 17,515, placing it better than 60% of results and, unsurprisingly, a slice below what are considered minimum specs for VR. Now, it has to be said, this score may just be a little bit wibbly, as you can see, because I was running my tests pre-launch. 3 Mark didn't have the card in the system yet, couldn't identify it, and of course, I'm on day zero drivers, which may or may not have issues of their own. So, between the driver updates, which will come, of course, and Maxwell's reputation for being a friendly overclocker, you can expect there's a few more points to be squeezed out here and there pretty easily. Again, make sure you're subscribed to make sure you catch the upcoming video dedicated to this Gigabyte card and its overclockability, specifically. I also burned out a few fire strike tests just for poops and giggles and to see what's up. Not expecting much of course as fire strike is meant to kick the teeth in at high end rigs but the little GTX 950 did okay-ish or at least respectably enough or at least it wasn't the stuttery slideshow I'd expected. <laughs> Can't expect miracles here. <laughs> A 1080p run at the Heaven benchmark, set up at high quality, moderate tessellation and four times anti-aliasing, yielded results that averaged 39 FPS. Pretty damn respectable for the low-end family member. Overall, I really am quite impressed by this little card that could. And with DX12 carrying with it that nifty little feature that can make use of multiple GPUs even if they're not a matched set like is required for SLI, Oh, right, the GTX 950 can, of course, be run in SLI, should you want that. I'm not sure why you would run two low-end cards in SLI, but it can be done. But anyway, with DX12, I could even pair this card up with my own GTX 970, and DX12 would just decide how to split up the workload between these two different cards, which gives us all a pretty cheap way to kick up the performance of our existing cards without the hassle of making a matched pair for traditional SLI. That's pretty exciting. So, if you're looking for something dollar-friendly for a new budget build, or you're looking to upgrade from a card that's a few years old now, or you're running on integrated graphics and you want something proper, or maybe you just like MOBAs and Minecraft and don't need or want the big dollar beefy GTX brothers in your rig, or maybe you just want something for a small power-efficient land rig to haul around, or you're building a HD PC for 4K video and a bit of gaming, perhaps you're even building up a Steam machine. The GTX 950 seems like a good solid choice for all of those options. Of course, it is not groundbreaking. There's nothing shockingly new and exciting here, really. It is just a baby brother Maxwell card after all. And like I said at the very beginning, it's very likely the last of its line before Nvidia moved to whatever architecture they've got cooking up next. But for now, on price, performance, and proper DX12 12.1 level support, it's hard not to really like this card. So what do you guys think? Is it up your alley or below your station? Drop a comment with the tippity tippity box thingy down there and on your way down do me a nicety and do the thing with the button if you would be so kind. Oh and yeah, I've got a few more vids coming up on this card as I've been teasing throughout this video and some more general Nvidia stuff they've got cooking away too. Some exciting stuff going with the GeForce experience I'm really looking forward to digging into. And I'm still doing tests and filming bits and pieces for those videos, so if there's something specific you want me to test or try out here, just ask, pop a comment, you know what to do. Meanwhile, thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.